Hi, it's Penny here, and as you may know, if you've watched my videos before, one of my goals for this year and also last year, but we're continuing it on, is series zero. So I'm trying to be caught up on all the series that I'm reading. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'll finish them all because some of them aren't finished yet, they haven't been released, but I do kind of have a process now where I'm pretty good at keeping up with new releases from the series that I'm reading. So I think my anticipated releases for 2023 video had most of the ones where books are being released this year, or at least where I'm caught up, pretty sure. But I think what I wanted to do in this video is just go through all the books that I would need to read to get to series zero, not including books where releases are still kind of coming out, unless I've still got books to catch up to where we're up to. Anyway, the thing to know is that there are 17 series here. There were more at the start of the year, but I have finished a couple already, so we are making progress. And I looked through this list briefly before I started filming, and I think I have a plan for most of these series. So I think series zero this year is actually achievable. I don't want to jinx myself. Anyway, let's get into talking about the series. So firstly, I have the Oz books by Frank Baum. Uh, so there are... Where's my spreadsheet? 14 books in this series. I'm not counting. There's a couple of like short story, novella type books. All these books are really short. They're children's books about the Land of Oz. You all know what the Land of Oz is, right? Dorothy and Toto go to the Land of Oz and they make the Scarecrow and the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion. And then Frank Baum actually wrote 14 books in this world. He loves inventing new characters and new creatures and going to new strange places. So there's so much more to it than just the original Dorothy and her three friends kind of part of the story. And actually I've so far only read the first six books. I am currently, as we speak, not while I'm filming, but like today, but this week I have been listening to the audiobook of the whole collection of Oz books uh, because early next month I'm going to be going to see Wicked the Musical and I wanted to reread Wicked before I went to that musical and then I wanted to read all the Oz books before I reread Wicked, which is like a Oz retelling, just so that I could know how that source material fed into it. So I'm currently reading all of these. I have the audiobooks for all of them. They're older children's books, so they're not always written in a style that fits modern taste, but they're a lot of fun. I'm having a good time. So I should be finished it. In fact, I have to be finished this by next week because my audiobook is returning itself. So once I've done that, that will be eight books off the list. Uh, then the next one on my list is the First Law trilogy and then the rest of that books in the series. I've kind of written it down as 10 books based entirely on trusting Becca in the books. When she said that's how many are in the series, I haven't done my own research. But I very recently read The Blade Itself, which is the first book in the series, and I really loved it. So I now have confidence that I will want to read the whole series, not just the first trilogy. So I've added them onto the list. Uh, I did only just start reading this series, though, even though I told myself I wasn't going to start any new series. But here we are. Uh, so this series is about a bunch of unlikable characters or morally grey characters uh, in this world where there's kind of an empire that's become very corrupt and is now at risk from other kingdoms that are kind of coming up and starting to come against it. There's also some very mysterious magical things going on. The world building and kind of the bigger plot seem very slow moving, so we didn't get much from the first book. But what we did get made me really intrigued to continue the series. And I do actually already have the second book on my March TBR and I got it from the library. And I already owned the third book that I picked up randomly once from a second hand shop. So I've got the first trilogy sorted. I'm pretty sure my library has all the other books though, so I'm not worried about being able to continue that one. Then the next series on my list is Alcatraz vs. The Evil Librarians. So this is a children's series by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, about this young boy named Alcatraz who discovers that there are these evil librarians or that all librarians are evil librarians and are kind of controlling the information that people know about the world and that there's all this secret magical stuff going on around that people don't even know about. I have read the first book in the series but quite a long time ago. I will probably reread it at some point when I get the whole series and I, th I think I'm just gonna binge it. I haven't really worked out when I'm going to do that, but I do know my library has the whole series 
the last book in the series was just recently released so once I catch up on a few of the other ones I'll get these all from the library and we'll just blast through it. They're short children's books, a lot of fun. I am a little bit concerned because lately I've read some of Brandon Sanderson's other fun books like Tress of the Emerald Sea and Cytonic and Tress was okay, Cytonic I hated. I just think when Brandon Sanderson is being fun it's not my favorite and so even though I remember liking that first Alcatraz book I'm now doubting myself and wondering if I will like the rest of the series but I will at some point at least give it a go. Uh, next on my list is the Jaren series by Kate Elliott. To be honest um, I still am counting all four books of the series as ones I need to read to get to series zero which doesn't really make sense because this list is meant to be only series that I've started so why would I still need to read all four books but the reason is because I read this no I read this book which I think is actually the third book in the series I read this about 20 something years ago when did it come out let's check this maths 1993 I think I read it in my late teens early 20s I really liked it. There was this woman who'd like run away from her father who was like some kind of spaceship commander and she had gone onto this planet and was living with this nomadic tribe with no technology and like falling in love with this guy which I kind of think that relationship was a little bit toxic from memory. But anyway I don't know why I started with this book. It actually says on it The Sword of Heaven book two but The Sword of Heaven is the second book of the Jaren series. So Jaren comes first and then there's another book and then there's this book two of that book. The series names are very confusing so I shouldn't have started with one that said book two on it but also I didn't know for a long time that this was actually the third book uh, but my library does have the ebooks of all of these so I should be able to read them at some point. I just have been waiting to catch up on some others first and it is possible that if I read this first one and I don't like it that I'll DNF the series but I kind of just want to read the whole series for like past me in my 20s who read this random third book and enjoyed it and then never continued. You know 20 year old Penny needs some closure. Then the next series on my list is The Wheel of Time. I did decide that I'm not gonna slog the whole way through The Wheel of Time. I really wasn't enjoying it. I got to book eight, I DNF'd it halfway through and then I've read the plot summaries. I think I keep getting the numbers wrong but I think up to the end of book 11 and then I'm gonna try picking it up again from the books where Brandon Sanderson started taking over. So I own the Gathering Storm which I think Robert Jordan started and then Brandon Sanderson finished and then I also have Towers of Midnight. I don't own the final book Memory of Light but we will see how we go with these ones. If I'm hating them I'll just read the plot summary for the rest of the series but maybe it will redeem itself. I'm not confident but I want to give it a go. So that'll just be three books that I need to read to finish that series. It doesn't seem like that much until you look at the size of these books. Why is it so long? Why? I have strong suspicions that there won't be enough plot to justify the length. Okay then the next series on my list is another Kate Elliott series. So this is the Crown of Stars series. I just have three more books to read. Is that right? Five, six, seven. Yes it's a seven book series. So I am actually about, I was gonna say a quarter but that is not a quarter, like maybe like 10% of the way through The Gathering Storm. I feel like at some point I should do like a Gathering Storm reading vlog because I have these two massive books called The Gathering Storm. Uh, but anyway, the Crown of Stars series is this big epic fantasy. I guess people fighting over the throne but also like other creatures coming in as well and there's also this dark magic and this upcoming cataclysm where these worlds are going to collide. Like there's so much different magic in here and I really like these books. I really like the characters. I just for some reason find the writing style quite dense and difficult to get through which is why I've been making very slow progress on this series and again I've just been waiting for the mental space to make some progress through them. I think this year I'm not working so I should have that mental space. I haven't yet because I've been doing too much decluttering and just have had a lot of other books to read. I think just because there's so many new releases at the start of the year all my library holds for those have been coming through but 
I'm pretty sure that that's going to ease off and then I will have a go at continuing this series. So I have the Gathering Storm and then I also have these other editions that I much prefer these editions actually. So In the Ruins and then also Crown of Stars. This, like, the one I'm reading now, The Gathering Storm, is the thickest. These ones at least are a little bit thinner. And I don't think it's because of paper thickness or anything. Yeah, these are only 500 pages long. Short. <laughs> okay, now a couple of series where I only have to read a couple of books to finish them. And actually, the next one, the books are pretty short. So this is the... I think this series is called... It doesn't actually say on here. Wow, it starts... This is a self-published series, I think or like published by a very small publishing house. Uh, and it basically just goes straight into chapter one. There's like one page of acknowledgements, one title page, chapter one. So this is a New Zealand author and these books are set in like the forests of New Zealand. Uh, they're creature horrors. I read the first book. I wasn't necessarily expecting to love it, but I did really love it. The way the anticipation was built and these characters just like stuck out in the bush so far away from everyone and any kind of help. I had a really fun time and so I found this third book randomly at a book fair and I do have the ebook of the second book in the series so I just need to read them. They're a lot shorter than some of these other books on my list so it really won't take me long. Part of me kind of wants to read them when I'm out in the middle of the bush though. Would that like make the scariness factor go up? I, I think so. And the other one where I need to read two books to finish the series is the Howl's Moving Castle series by Diana Wynne Jones. I think there's three books in that Howl's Moving Castle series and then there is like another spin-off series but I decided just to count the first trilogy and then we'll see how I feel. I did really like Howl's Moving Castle even though there are differences from the movie and I like some things about the book and some things about the movie more but it was really whimsical and fun. I don't really have a plan to continue this series in terms of how I'm going to do it, but I think the library probably has the books. I was kind of waiting and hoping they just magically find their way to me from a secondhand shop or something, but they haven't. I think this is a series where I'm kind of waiting till I catch up on some other ones before I pick this one up. And I'm probably going to have to reread Howl's Moving Castle because it's been a while. Well, that's a good excuse to rewatch the movie as well. Okay, and then the next nine series, I just need to read one book. It's not much, right? But it's nine books to get through all of these, but I think I can do it. Uh, so firstly, we have the Up and Under series by A. Deborah Baker, actually Sean and Maguire. This series, ah, oh, such a great concept, so poorly executed. So in the books Middle Game by Sean and Maguire, there is this alchemist called A. Deborah Baker who writes these children's books in order to get ideas into people's heads so that then she'll be able to use like that common understanding of things to create alchemy and then these are the books that she wrote except that like I didn't mind the first one but the second one was so boring nothing was happening and this third book I honestly I told myself I'd DNF the series and then I saw this was available at the library and I haven't seen anyone talking about it which makes me really curious because I saw a lot of people giving the second book rave reviews but if they really loved it that much how come they haven't picked up the third book hmm it's made me very suspicious uh, I'm gonna try reading this I obviously I have it right now from the library I'm reading it this week I might not finish it I might DNF it but it's really short so we're just gonna read it for my curiosity then the next one on the list is In Every Generation by Kendara Blake. So this is like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer story, except that we are following the newest Slayer, who is actually the daughter of the witch Willow. So she's a witch as well as now a Slayer uh, and just doing Slayer type activities. Buffy has gone missing and there's some big bads floating around. I've actually kind of forgotten the first book and I toyed with the idea of DNFing this series because it is targeted at a much younger audience than I am and like I really like Buffy the Vampire Slayer so I always think I want to consume all this Buffy stuff but really I think I'm too old for it now and I should just enjoy the original Buffy and not necessarily try to read all these other ones. However, I do remember that I liked some things about the first book. So I saw the second book was available at my library. I decided I'll just read it and then we'll decide whether we're going to continue the series or not. 
Then we have the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. So the only one I need to read is the latest release, Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. This only came out end of December last year, so I'm not very far behind. And I have the book here. I think I actually put this one in my anticipated releases list. But anyway, this follows Stevie who wants to become a detective. In the first trilogy, she was solving this murder that happened at this special boarding school that she goes to. And at the same time, new murders started happening. Then there was a fourth book where she solved a murder at her summer school. This one, I think she's going to visit her boyfriend in the UK and then probably going to solve a murder case. I actually have this on audio CD because for some reason my library didn't have the audiobook available on Libby or BorrowBox, any of the apps that it has. It does have the ebook but I really like the audiobooks of this series so when I saw the audio CD was available I got it even though audio CDs are a little bit annoying to listen to. Oh, then the next two are both Babysitter's Club related. So the Babysitter's Club was one of my most favorite book series when I was a very young child about this group of girls who form a club around babysitting. Uh, there are now graphic novel adaptations being done. So I think there's a new one that's just been released and another one going to be released later in the year. So I need to catch up on reading those. I don't remember which stories it is exactly, but I want to read it. It'll be super quick to read. I do actually already have a hold on it at the library, but the library hold lists for these Babysitter's Club books are so long, like the longest hold lists of any books I've ever seen at the library, like hundreds of people waiting to read these books. It's crazy. Anyway, uh, there's a new Babysitter's Club one coming out and then also there's a Babysitter's Club little sister following Karen, one of the sisters of the Babysitters, and there's a new one of those that I also have a hold on. Also a super long hold list. Okay, then I just had to go to my bedroom to get this one because the next series on the list is the Wayward Children series. This is the eighth book. It's just come out earlier in the year and as you can see I just got it from the library and I have started reading it. So once I finish this I'll be caught up on the series. Uh, if you don't know about the series, it follows children who have found a magical door and gone through it into this magical world and then for whatever reason have found themselves back in our boring normal world and they're really struggling with living this kind of crappy life. So there's a school for wayward children where these children can go try to find their doors again and also just be around children who've had a similar experience. And then every second book in this series is a story about a child finding their magical door and going to a magical world. So this one follows Antoinette as she goes to this world of lost and found. I am enjoying it so far but that is a conversation for my reading vlog and my wrap up. Uh, then the next series I would just need to read one more book of is the Elemental Assassin series by Jennifer Estep. This is a story about this woman named Jin who's also the assassin, the spider in this world where people have elemental magic and there's also vampires and dwarves and it's been a long time since I read this series but I always find it a lot of fun, kind of just like a paranormal fantasy romance kind of series. It's quite formulaic but still just fast-paced and fun. I've always been buying these books for my mum who really enjoyed them uh, but I always enjoy them too. And the last few books in the series were self-published and I did buy her the last book and normally I pre-read them but I didn't have time so I haven't read this one. I need to borrow it from her and finish it off and I'm just remembering we are thinking about moving down the country many hours drive away so I need to make sure I read that before we move or it will be a lot more difficult to borrow. Okay, then the next series is one that I'm actually not sure I will finish this year. So this might be the one that gets in the way of me being able to say I've actually achieved series zero. Uh, and that is The Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. I do have the fourth book. So like all I need to do is read this. All I need to do is read these a thousand pages. Uh, and then I would have finished the series. However, I decided to do like a whole Cosmere reread before I finished the series and like reread all the books in the series before this one so that I can really like fully get as much from this one as possible. And I'm also not in too much of a hurry because I'd kind of like to finish that reread just before the fifth book comes out so then I can continue into it. So like I probably won't finish this but I'm not too worried about it. And I'm also not going to give you a synopsis of this series because it's so widely talked about and also it's too hard because there's too much going on. 
to wrap it up into a few sentences. And then lastly is the Bobaverse series by Dennis E. Taylor. So this is about a man who gets himself frozen when he dies and then he wakes up and his consciousness has been put into this self-replicating spaceship and humanity is in a lot of danger and so him and the other spaceships that he makes by replicating himself, so his other selves that are also spaceships, uh, go about trying to save the world and explore the universe. It's actually quite a fun series. It's been a while since I've read the first three books. I'm thinking about whether I reread them or not. But I'm not sure if they would be as enjoyable on a reread. I don't know, if you've read that series, what do you think? Should I reread the first three books before I go into the fourth book? Because I feel like it will probably kind of remind me about what's happening. Also, I think the fourth book is about uh, one of these spaceships who decided to just go off, fly as far as he could and see what he could find. And now the other Bobs have decided to go and see if they can find him and see if he's okay. So these ones are only available on Audible as well. And I did stop my Audible subscription because like, I don't have a job right now. Can't really justify the cost. However, I had put it on hold. I might just let it slip an extra month in there before I put it on hold again uh, so that I can get this one last book from the series so that I can tick this series off as well. So that's all the books I need to read to be able to say that I've achieved series zero. I do think it's pretty achievable or at least that I should be able to read like 90% of these books by the end of the year. There's just a few that might hang over but there's reasons for that and I don't feel too bad about it. So I think when I add it up it says I need to read 45 more books to get to series zero and I'll have that under 40 by the time I finish the Oz books next week. So I really think I should be there in a few more months, definitely by the end of the year. Anyway, do let me know if you have read any of these series or have any thoughts about these series. Also let me know how well you're doing at keeping up with series. Do you have any kind of strategies or approaches to help you keep up with series or do you just not even worry about it and let them all build up? That's what I used to do and then I got overwhelmed so I made a plan. Anyway, let's chat down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.